Do you want free money on RuneScape? Because all profits from these videos will be going back to one of you guys. Want to know how you can enter? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and comment your RuneScape username down below. Now let's get into today's video. Welcome back to testing old school RuneScape money making methods. Feel free to leave any suggestions in the comment section down below for what you'd like me to do next on the channel. If you would like, you can browse all other money making methods I've tried here on the channel by clicking on my playlist either at the end of this video or in the description box down below. Welcome to Season 5 of Test No SRS Wiki Money Making Methods and today's money maker is going to be Cooking Karambwans and they was released to the game on September the 14th 2004. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you are watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. The most important requirement for you guys to be able to cook these Quan Buans is that you will have to have completed the Taibo One Eye Trio quest. After completing this quest, you will then need at least a level 30 in the cooking skill, but I would recommend for you guys to wait until you have the cooking gauntlets and you are able to cook these Quan Buans in the Hosidius House range. This is because at level 87 cooking you will stop burning these fish. And the third and final requirement for today's video is uh, you guys will need to have around 500 to 600 k in starter cash. This is just so you can do this method efficiently for one hour. My gear setup is on screen. All I am using for my gear is a 99 cooking cape. But for you guys I would recommend the cooking gauntlets if you do not have the cooking cape already. As this will reduce your burn rate by 5%. For my inventory for this video I have just gone with a full backpack of uncooked karambwans. And the location we're using in today's video is the Myths Guild. If you guys wanted to cook here, you will have to complete the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. However, another good location for you guys to use is the Hosidious House cooking range. Cooked Karambwans is a food commonly used by players to combo eat. To be able to cook a Karambwan, the player must complete the Taibo One Eye Trio quest and have at least a level 30 in the cooking skill. Although the cooking requirement is low, it is strongly suggested to only cook these Karambwans at a higher level as the burn rate is significantly reduced. Players who cook these Karambwans at the Hosidious House cooking range and have the cooking gauntlets equipped will stop burning these Karambwans at level 87 in the cooking skill. With this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many Karambwans we have managed to cook in this one hour and to see how much money will be given away in today's video. Welcome to the final price check of cooking these Karambwans for one hour. Here in my invent is all the Karambwans we have managed to cook. We have managed to cook 1383. I completely forgot to leave a raw one in the bank because I did record this a couple of days ago. So I am going to go off the price of 367 for what I bought these for. So if I just go ahead and bring up a calculator, then we will go um, 367. Uh, we'll times that by 1383, 1383. So our total investment in today's video was 507,561 GP. So if I now go ahead and price check this, so the price of the money we have made in this one hour comes out to be 762,033 GP. So if I go ahead and take this away from the um, the capital we started with, so 762,762,033. So today's profits is going to be 254,472 GP. Welcome to Season 5 of Testing OSRS Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be crafting gold jewellery. And for this video we are going to be focusing on the gold rings and they was released at the game on the 8th of may 2001 if you guys want you can join my cc for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live just like this one you are watching right now the requirements for this video are the following and they are going to be pretty easy requirements the first one is a skill requirement and all it is is that you will need a level 5 in the crafting skill this is so you can actually make these gold rings the second requirement is not too bad either and that is you will need around 150,000 coins in starter cash this is so you can do this efficiently for one hour the third and final requirement for this method is that you'll need to bring with you a ring mold this is so you can actually make the gold rings also. I do not have a gear set up for this video as we are just running back and forth from the uh, furnace. But I would recommend for you guys to just wear something light. Whether it's weight reducing clothing or just nothing on your character at all. And for my invent, 
I have gone with a ring mold as we need this to craft the rings and also I have brought along 27 gold bars. This is so we can make the rings. For the location we're using in today's video, we are, we are going to be based in Edgeville as we are very close to the furnace and so we can run back to the Edgeville bank and uh, I'm pretty sure this is one of the quickest places to be on free to play so that is why we have stationed here. There are only four pieces of gold jewellery in game. A gold ring, which requires a crafting level of 5 to make. A gold necklace, which requires a crafting level of level 6 to make. A gold bracelet, which requires a level 7 to make. And finally a gold amulet, and this requires a level 8 to make. All four of them are pretty easy to make, and currently the gold bracelet is the most profitable. However, if you wanted to make a gold bracelet, you will have to become a member to craft this item. As we are focusing on the gold rings in today's video, I will just go through a little bit of information about this item. Gold rings can be worn in the ring slot, however they do not give you or grant you any bonuses like other rings do. And if you really wanted to, you can sell these gold rings to the Grums Gold Exchange in Port Sarim and he will start to buy them for 245 coins, but bear in mind the more you sell to him, the less money you will receive. And that is all I've got for gold rings, so let's jump on over to the final price check. So we can see how many gold rings we've managed to make in this one hour, and to see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Welcome to the final price check of making these gold rings. So in today's video, we managed to make 1,542 gold rings. So if I just go ahead and bring up a calculator really quickly, then we can price check the price of one gold bar. So in this video, we, we used 1,542 gold bars at a price of 94 each. If I just go ahead and add that up in the calculator, 94 times 1,542. So today's uh, capital our investment is 144,948 GP. So if I now go ahead and take out the gold bar and add in these gold rings, that will give us our net profit. So our net profit from this is 181,956 GP. So then if I go ahead and take this away from our investment, so uh, take away 181,956, so our overall profit for today's video is 37,008 GP. Welcome to Season 5 of Test No Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be Slaying Viawatch Sentinels. They were released at the game on the 4th of June 2020. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. The most important requirement is to have completed the Sins of the Father quest. This is so you can actually kill these Bio Watches. For the skill requirements, I would recommend for you guys to have at least level 70s in your combat skills, alongside a level 43 in prayer. This is so you can protect from melee. And finally, for the item requirements, you'll want to have the Via Noble Disguise. This is so you can use the bank deposit, uh, as this is very close to where we will be killing these Bio Watch Sentinels. My gear setup is on screen and I will run through it now. So I've gone with a Slayer Helm, this is because I'm killing these Bio Watches on a Slayer task. Next up is a Fire Cape with the Amulet of Torture, and I've also got a Blessing, this is for an extra prayer bonus. My weapons of choice for today's video is the Dragon Fender with the Blister Wood Flail. My armour is the Proselyte Plate Body and the Proselyte Plate Legs for that extra prayer bonus. Then I've gone with the Ferocious Gloves, the Primordial Boots and the Berserker Ring. If you guys cannot afford any of these or you don't have these items, you can change out some of these items to the ones you can afford. For example, the Primordial Boots you can swap out for Dragon Boots, the Torture you can swap out for a Fury, and even the Proselyte you can swap out for the Initiate. My inventory setup is on screen and I will enlarge it. All I have in my inventory to start this video is a Viwatch Noble Disguise. This is so I can use the bank which is very very close to where we are killing these Viwatches in Darkmire. For the location we are using in today's video we are in Darkmire. You will gain access to this place after the completion of Sins of the Father Quest. Viwatch Sentinels are stronger variants of the Viwatch and can be fought after completing the Sins of the Father quest. They can be found prowling the streets of the upper class area of Darkmire. 
The Firewatch Sentinels are the only monsters that drop the Blood Shard. Although the Blood Shard can be obtained by a pickpocket in the various via citizens throughout the city. So if you guys would like me to do a loot video from pickpocketing these citizens, let me know in the comment section down below. And these Firewatch Sentinels can only be harmed with the Invandis Flail or the Blisterwood Flail. To be assigned vampires for a Slayer task, the player must purchase the ability for 80 Slayer reward points. Once you have unlocked this, you can disable it, however if you do disable it, then you will have to unlock it again for an additional 80 Slayer points. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much XP we have gained in this video and how much money we will be giving away in today's video. So we have finished killing the Viwatch Sentinels for one hour and here in my event is everything we have managed to get. So let's just jump over to the XP. So for this one hour we managed to get 56,500 in defense, 18,800 in hit points and 14,100 in slayer. So if I just go ahead and price check this then this will give us our price overall. So loot from one hour of killing Viwatch Sentinels comes out to be 351,176. Welcome to Season 5 of Tessano Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is opening gem bags. And they was released to the game on the 21st of April 2016. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. There are no requirements for today's video as long as you already have the golden nuggets which you get passively from mining in the load mine. If you guys would like me to collect another 1000 golden nuggets so we can exchange them for soft clay packs, comment down below and I will start to collect them. For this video I do not have a gear or invent setup, so let's jump straight into some information. Golden nuggets are obtained in the motherload mine by searching the sack after cleaning the pay dirt. There is a 2.74% chance of pay dirt yielding a golden nugget. This doesn't matter if you are level 30 mining or level 99 mining. You still have the same chance of a pay dirt uh, being turned into a golden nugget. A bag full of gems is obtainable from Prospector Percy's nugget shop, 40 golden nuggets. There are a couple more places where you can exchange certain items for a bag of gems. And I'll put them on screen. But this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see what gems we've managed to get and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Hello and welcome back to the final price check of 1000 golden nuggets. So with our 1000 golden nuggets, as you guys saw, we decided to buy these gem packs and we managed to buy 25 gem bags. So here in my invent is all of the gems we've managed to get. So let's just go ahead and price check these. First of all, we will start off with the sapphires. We managed to get 512 sapphires and that is 165k. Then we managed to get 334 emeralds, so that puts us up to 338k. After that we managed to get 114 rubies, and that puts our price up to 470k. Second to last was diamonds, we managed to get 36 of them, so that puts our price up to 564,000 coins. And last but not least, we managed to get 4 dragon stones. I'm not sure if that was good or bad, so that brings our entire profit up to 619,740 GP. Welcome to Season 5 of Tesno Osiris Wiki Money Maker Methods. And today's money maker is Slaying the Kraken. And it was released to the game on the 10th of April 2014. If you guys want, you could join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live. Just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. You will need a level 87 in the Slayer skill. This is so you can be assigned to slay the Kraken. You will also need a Cave Kraken Slayer task to be able to fight this Kraken because it is a Slayer uh, locked boss. And finally, to be able to harm the Kraken, you must have at least a level 50 in the Magic skill. My gear setup is on screen and I'll run through it now. I am using the Slayer Helm as you need to be on a Slayer task to slay this Kraken so I'm using it for the extra damage. I've also got a God Cape, you guys can use the upgraded version but I just don't have that. I've also got the Occult Necklace and some Iron Arrows. The Iron Arrows are for when I am trying to tag the tentacles and to make the Kraken aggressive. I'm using the Trident of the Swamp, but if you cannot afford this, or you just don't have this if you're an Iron Man, then you guys can use the Trident of the Seas. 
For my armor, I'm using Blessed Dragon Hide. You can either use the regular Dragon Hide, or if you really wanted to, you could push the bow out and go for some Kirills. For my off-handed weapon, I am using the Book of Darkness. This will give me extra magic bonus. Then I'm using the Barrow's Gloves, the internal boots, but once again, if you cannot afford the internal boots, you can change these out. And finally, I am using the Seer's Ring. My inventory is on screen and I will enlarge it for you all. In my inventory, I have a magic short bow. This is to use with the iron arrow so I can aggro the tentacles and the kraken. I also bring one anglerfish at the start of each trip. This is so I have my HP to the maximum number. I bring a teleport scroll book. This is so I can get back to the Piscatorius fishing place quickly. And with the rest of my invent, I just fill it up with pineapple pizzas as these heal for 22 HP and they are far cheaper than the anglerfish. For the location in today's video, we are at the Kraken Cove, which is located just southwest of the Piscatorius fishing colony. Now let's jump into some information about this method. The Kraken is a stronger and larger version of the Cave Kraken, and this requires a level 87 to be able to be killed, and it is located in the Kraken Cove. It can only be attacked if the player has a Cave Kraken Slayer task. Alongside its non-boss variant, it is the only monster that drops the Trident of the Seas and the Kraken Tentacle. Just like the Cave Kraken, this Kraken is submerged in water, and magic is probably the only reliable way to deal in damage to it, as range attacks are heavily reduced, and you cannot uh, access or you cannot reach the Krakens with melee, so I'd probably go with magic. Both the Kraken and its tentacles attack with magic. The Kraken can hit very hard but often misses, while the tentacles are much more accurate but they deal a lot less damage. And finally, players can create a Kraken instance for 25,000 coins. The fee can be deducted directly from your bank. This means the player does not need to carry any coins with them. If they have the 25,000 coins in the bank, then it will be taken directly from that, which saves you an invent spot. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many kills we've managed to get in this one hour and to see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Hello and welcome to the final price check of killing Cave Kraken. So we killed Cave Kraken for around about an hour. I'm pretty sure it was, I think it could have been like a minute less than an hour. I did install the supplies tracker on this video so then we can track my supplies a lot easier. So all of our supplies have been tracked here. So that comes out to be 387,000 coins. I'll just go ahead and bring up a calculator. So I'll just go ahead and grab everything out of the bank. Then we can see how much profit we have earned. So I have gone ahead and grabbed everything out of the bank. So here in my invent is everything we managed to get in this one hour. So the investment was 387,000, but I need to add on 25,000 coins for the private room so our total investment for this video was 412,000 coins now if i go ahead and price check all of this so loot from one hour of killing cave kraken comes out to be 1,169,144 but like always i have to subtract the investment in there so then i will bring you back with the actual total profit so our total profit from one hour of cave kraken comes out to be 757,144 GP. Welcome to season 5 of Tesno Osiris Wiki Money Maker Methods. And today's money maker is mixing quam potions. And it was released in the game on the 27th of February 2002. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live. Just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are pretty simple. There is really only one requirement to be able to do this method and that is to have a level 55 in the Herblore skill. This is so you can add the Quam Leaf to the Vial of Water and a recommended requirement or just another requirement if you guys really want to. If you don't have a lot of money to be able to do this efficiently for one hour then I would recommend for you guys to do this method at the GE. This is so you can sell your potions and buy more supplies as you go. As we are mixing potions in this video, I do not have a gear setup, however my inventory setup is on screen and I will enlarge it. In my inventory, I have 14 quam leaves and 14 vials of water. To do this method, all you need to do is just uh, use one on the other, then either hit the spacebar or click make all. After you have managed to mix all the potions, all you have to do is go into your bank, deposit everything and withdraw 14 more of each. For the location or for the bank we're using in today's video, we are located in the Varrock West Bank. But like I said before, if you don't have a lot of money, then you could easily do this at the GE. But now let's jump on over to some information about this method. 
Quam potions are often used to train herbal art, and adding a clean quam leaf to a vial of water doesn't give no experience, but many players will avoid making unfinished potions and just buy them directly from the Grand Exchange. So this opens up an opportunity to make unfinished quam potions for profit and for money. However, like all methods involving large amounts of buying and selling, I would recommend for you guys to test the market by making one unfinished potion first and then selling it to see if there is any profit in doing so. These quam potions are unfinished potions and they are made by using a quam leaf and a vial of water. This requires a level 55 in the herb law skill. After this process, the player can use a lintwort root on the quam potion with level 55 herb law to make a super strength potion. Or if the player has a level 16 herb law skill, they can add one dragon scale dust to make a weapon poison. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many potions we've managed to mix in this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making these Quam potions. Here in my invent is all of the potions we managed to make and we managed to make 3,689 potions. I have also brought up a calculator so we can calculate the uh, price for each potion which was 1392 for the price of leaning the Quam and 5GP for the vial of water. So that comes out to be 1397. So if we times that by 3689, 3689, our total investment for today's video comes out to be 5,153,533 GP. So if we go ahead and price check this, so one hour of making Quam potions unfinished comes out to be 5,529,811 GP. So I'll go ahead and take this away from our total investment, then that will give us our net profit. So 552, 552, So today's profits is going to be 376,278 GP. Welcome to season five of Test Noah Cyrus Wiki Moneymaker Methods. And today's moneymaker is going to be opening the sinister chest and this chest was released to the game on the 12th of december 2002 if you guys want you can join my cc for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live just like this one you're watching right now the requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following you will need a level 49 in the agility skill this is so you have access to the place where the sinister chest resides another requirement is that you're going to need a sinister key to be able to open this chest but bear in mind, if you're planning to open this chest more than once, you are going to need more than one sinister key, as one sinister key will only open the chest once. The third requirement you will need to be able to do this method is some sort of anti-poison. Whether that is the Arnai rejuvenation pool in your house, or something like an anti-poison, anti-doe, or even the serpentine helmet. And for a recommended requirement, I would make sure that you either have the watchtower teleport, or your house is located in your nil. This is so you can get back to the sinister chest uh, fairly quickly. My gear setup is on screen and I will run through it. I've gone with some weight reducing clothing. You guys don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm pretty sure you won't run out of run energy uh, from running from your nil to uh, the chest location and teleporting away. I brought weight reducing clothing because I used the bank in your nil to unnote the sinister keys. I've also brought a slash weapon. I've gone with a dragon dagger in today's video because I already had a lot of them in the bank from when I was doing Slayer. But you guys can bring any slash weapon you really want to or you can just use the uh, the regular knife and just put it in your inventory or that will take up an extra inventory slot. Talking about my inventory, mine is on screen and I will enlarge it. For my inventory, I've gone with four Yanil house teleport tablets. You can make these by using a house teleport tablet and using a house redirection scroll on them. You get them from the nightmare zone. I've gone with four because that is all I need to be able to do these 100 kills. The rest of my inventory is just filled up with sinister keys. As for the herbs you get from this chest, they are noted so you don't need to bring a herb bag with you and after my first run i will just bring 20 sinister keys so then i never have to bang the herbs but now let's jump into some information about these keys and this chest in general the sinister chest is a locked chest and this chest is located in the agility dungeon in Yunil. It is in the part of the dungeon that requires a level 49 in agility to access. The chest can only be unlocked with a sinister key. This key is a drop from Salarin the Twisted. I'm pretty sure I said that right. 
Um, it's also dropped from the Chaos Fanatic, and you may even be lucky enough to snag one of these keys when looting a magpie implant jar, or when you are catching a magpie implant bare hand. If the chest is opened, it will emit a toxic gas, which poisons the player, so it is advised to drink an anti-poison or have some sort of alternative way to get rid of the poison whether that is an all night rejuvenation pool in your POH or the serpentine helmet like I said. The sinister chest always rewards 9 noted herbs. It will give the player 3 grimy renars, 2 grimy harolanders, 1 grimy torstal, 1 grimy irrit leaf, 1 grimy avento and finally 1 grimy quarm. To open the chest it requires a sinister key and the key is used up when the chest is opened, so one key per one chest. Depending on the price difference between the keys and the herbs you get, it can be very profitable to buy sinister keys on the Grand Exchange, open the chest and sell the resulting herbs on the Grand Exchange also. The price of sinister keys jumps around a lot, so I would make sure that it is profitable before even trying this method. With this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Hello and welcome to the price check of 100 Sinister Keys. We bought these Sinister Keys for 32,049 GP each and in total from opening this uh, 100 keys we used one antidote sip so that comes out to be 404 so let's just go ahead and bring up a calculator and then we can calculate the total investment so we paid 32,000 and 49 each we bought 100 of them which is 3204900 oh, plus the 404 oh, for the one antidote so our total investment is 3,205,304 gp if we now go ahead and price check all of this we can see how much money we have made or how much money we have lost so loot from 100 sinister keys comes out to be 3,450,100 GP. So if we go ahead and take this away from our total investment. So 3,450,100. So today's profits is going to be 244,796 GP. Welcome to Season 5 of Test No Osiris Wiki Moneymaker Methods and today's moneymaker is going to be Cutting Ruby Bolt Tips They were released to the game on the 31st of July 2006 If you guys want you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live just like this one you're watching right now The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are fairly simple and they are the following You will need to have a level 63 in the flexion skill This is so you can actually cut these rubies into bolt tips you will want to have a chisel in your ventry as this is what we will be using to cut these rubies into bolt tips and the third and final requirement is you will need or you will want around 1.5 million in starter cash this is so you can buy all the rubies you will need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour as we are bank standing in today's video i do not have a gear set up and for my inventory all i have is a chisel to cut the rubies into bolt tips and the rest of my inventory i have filled with rubies for the purpose of this video i will be keeping all the bolt tips in my invent so they don't get mixed up with the ones i already have in my bank and if you guys are interested in the bank i am standing at we are currently in nada ruby bolt tips are used to make ruby bolts which in turn can be enchanted to make ruby bolts e and these are very effective against boss monsters it can be immensely profitable to cut rubies into bolt tips but there is also a risk of losing money so before buying rubies in bulk i would highly recommend that you test a profit from one of them with a chisel in your inventory you can withdraw up to 27 rubies at a time each ruby becomes 12 bolt tips when chiseled it takes three seconds to cut a ruby into bolt tips so this means you can roughly cut around 1150 rubies per hour the price paid for ruby bolt tips can vary by more than 20% over the median price or 20% under. But to maximise your profits, buy one ruby bolt tip instantly on the Grand Exchange and then sell yours for slightly below that price. Doing it this way can take a lot longer but it could double your profit in the long term. So if you don't mind selling them for the uh, slower price or for the slightly higher than the medium price congratulations to you you will probably earn more profit from doing this method than what i used in today's video but with this now all being said let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many bolt tips we have managed to cut in this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video 
welcome to the final price check of making ruby bolt tips so here in my event is all the ruby bolt tips we managed to make we managed to make one three five eight four ruby bolt tips so let's go ahead and open up the calculator one three uh five eight four and then you make 12 bolt tips per one ruby let's just go ahead and divide that by 12 so we used 1132 rubies if i go ahead and price check one ruby that comes out to be 899 so now let's times that by 899 so our total investment for today's video was 1,017,668 gp so now if i take this out and add in our entire uh, Ruby Bolt Tips. So we made 1,290,480 GP in today's video. If we go ahead and take this away from our total um, investment, so 129, 129, 0480. So our total profits for today's video is 272,812 GP. Welcome to Season 5 of Testing Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be smithing the cannonballs and that was released to the game on the 27th of May 2003. If you guys want, join the CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. First of all, you will want to have completed the dwarf cannon quest. This is so you can learn how to make cannonballs and then you are allowed to make them. The second requirement for this method is that you'll want to have at least a level 35 in the smithing skill. This is so you can smith these cannonballs. And last but not least, you'll need to have an ammo mold in your inventory. This is so you can actually make the cannonballs. As these cannonballs take a long time to smith, I do not have a gear set up for this video. For my inventory setup, however, I have a ammo mold and 27 steel bars. And for the purpose of this video, I will be keeping all the cannonballs I make in my inventory. This is so they don't get mixed up with the one I already have in the bank. And for anyone that is wondering, we will be smithing these cannonballs at the Edgeville Furnace. But now let's jump into some information about this method. Cannonballs are ammunition used in a dwarf multi cannon. After the completion of the dwarf cannon quest, 35 smithing and an ammo mold in your inventory, players can smith cannonballs. They can be made using a steel bar on a furnace. This will yield 25.6 smithing experience and the player will make 4 cannonballs per steel bar. This can be very profitable depending on how many cannonballs you want to make, as the price of one steel bar is currently 365 coins and this produces 4 cannonballs and the price of 4 cannonballs is around 730 coins so based on these prices you can double your money as you'll get around 365 coins in profit per steel bar you make into cannonballs depending on which furnace the player chooses you can produce between 2160 and 2400 cannonballs per hour that means the profit margin falls between 197,100 and 219,000 hourly. The Priftonus Furnace is the closest to a bank, but this requires the completion of Song of the Elves quest. Shiloh Village is the second closest to a bank, but this requires to complete the Shiloh Village quest and the player must pay 20 coins to use the furnace each time they want to make some. So that is why we are using the furnace in Edgeville, as this is the closest furnace to a bank that doesn't have any requirements. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many cannonballs we've made smithing this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. So we have finished making our cannonballs. So here in my invent is all the cannonballs we managed to make. We managed to make 2228 so 2228 cannonballs so let's bring up a calculator and divide that by four so we can see how many steel bars we've managed to use in this one hour so two 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 eight divide that by four so over this one hour we managed to use five five seven steel bars so 557 steel bars now let's go ahead and price check one steel bar and that comes out to be 346 gp so if we times that by 346 so our total investment for today's video was 1927 which is 192,722 GP. Let's just go ahead and copy that number and then we will cancel the uh, calculator. So if we take this steel bar out and we add in all of our cannonballs, so today's net profit 
comes out to be 374, 304, so 374,304 GP. So if we put that in the calculator, so 374, 304, and if we take away the number we copied, so that would be 192722. So now let's go and press the equals. So today's profits is 181,582 GP. Welcome to season five of Test No SRS Wiki Money Making Methods. Today's money maker is going to be making ruby bracelets. They was released to the game on the 30th of April 2007. If you guys want you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you are watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. First of all, you will want to have at least a level 42 in the crafting skill, this is so we can make these ruby bracelets. Secondly, you will want to have a bracelet mold in your inventory. This is also so we can make these bracelets. And last but not least, you will want to have around 1 million to 1.5 million in starter cash. This is so we can do this method efficiently for one hour. In this video, I do not have a gear set up. I would recommend for you guys to wear weight reducing clothing. This is so you don't run out of run energy. I wish I would have used um, my graceful armor while doing this uh, video, but I didn't do that and I'm pretty sure I ran out of run energy more than once while doing this so I would highly recommend for you guys to wear your graceful. For my inventory I have 13 gold bars, 13 rubies and one bracelet mold. And for anyone who is wondering we will be making these ruby bracelets at the Edgeville Furnace. But now let's jump into some information about this method. A ruby bracelet is an item of jewellery that players can make by using a gold bar on a furnace while they have a ruby in the inventory alongside a bracelet mould. This requires a level 42 to be made and this grants the player 80 crafting experience. The only downside to this bracelet, even though it does look fancy, it does not offer any combat bonuses when worn. But players can enchant ruby bracelets by casting a level 3 enchantment spell on it. Doing so requires a level 49 in the magic skill, but this will grant you 59 magic experience. For people who want to do this method, all you'll want to do is bring a bracelet mold while having 13 gold bars and 13 rubies in your inventory. You can use one of these items on any furnace and then all you have to do is select that you want to make a ruby bracelet. This will take around 3 game ticks or 1.8 seconds to make a single ruby bracelet. After you've made all your ruby bracelets, all you have to do is go back to the bank, deposit your ruby bracelets, then withdraw 13 more gold bars, 13 more rubies and then repeat this process. But for this and all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many ruby bracelets we have managed to make in this one hour and to see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. So welcome to the final price check of making ruby bracelets. Here in my invent is all the ruby bracelets we managed to make. We, we managed to make 1204 bracelets through this one hour. I'll just go ahead and price check one bracelet and that is 1121. So let me just go ahead and bring up a calculator really quickly. And then if we take away our investment, so our investment was 985. So let's take away 985 and that comes out to be 136 GP profit per one ruby bracelet we managed to make. So if we go um, 985 times 1204, so, so 985 times 1204. Our total investment for today's video was 1,185,940 GP. So now if I go ahead and add in all of these uh, ruby bracelets, that will bring us out our net profit. So our net profit for today's video was 1,349,684 GP. But if I go ahead and put this in a calculator, so 1,349,684 then if we go ahead and take away our investment, which was 1185940. So our total um, profit for today's video is 163,744 GP. Welcome to season five of Test No Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be Catching Monkfish. They was released to the game on the 2nd of May, 2006. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. 
The requirements you will need beyond Dudes Method are the following. The first requirement is a quest requirement and you will need to have completed the Swan Song quest. This is so you have access to the Piscatari's fishing colony, as this is the location we will be catching these monkfish in today's video. Secondly, you will want to have at least a level 62 in the fishing skill, as this is the, the level requirement to be able to catch a monkfish. Uh, but bear in mind, the higher your fishing level is, the uh, better chance you will have to catch a monkfish. And finally, the last set of requirements are recommended. The first one for you guys is to have a full angler's outfit, as this will give you more experience when you catch a monkfish. If you guys do not have this outfit, I have actually done a quick guide in the past, but I will link that down below in the description box. My second requirement for you guys is to have a rider's blessing, as this will give you a slight chance of catching an additional fish every time you successfully catch a monkfish. My gear setup is on screen and I will just run through it now. For today's video I have the full set of anglers. I do not have the Radar's Blessing but I would recommend for you guys to bring one if you have one as this will give you a slight chance of catching an extra fish. I've gone with the Fletching Cape but you guys can wear any cape. You guys can actually wear anything else in your armor slots as long as you have the angler's outfit. And for my inventory I will not put it on screen in today's video because all we have is a small fishing net as this is required to be able to catch the monkfish. But now let's jump into some information about this method. Monkfish are fish that can be caught with a fishing level of at least 62. This will grant the player 120 fishing experience per fish they catch. Players can do this by fishing at the Piscatoris fishing colony with a small fishing net. However, the colony may only be accessed upon completion of the Swan Son quest. Monkfish give 10 more fishing experience per catch than what sharks do and they're caught much faster and as well as they can be fished at a lower fishing level than sharks so this makes monkfish a very efficient way of leveling up your fishing and with there being a bank very close by you can make some decent cash while leveling up your fishing by doing this method however the only downside is um, sharks are more valuable and give more cooking experience although that does not matter if you don't plan on cooking your monkfish anyway and just plan on selling them players can expect to catch between 205 and 375 monkfish per hour but this depends on your fishing level so for your hourly profit it will be somewhere between 51,250 and then 3,750 gp but once again this will depend on your fishing level but with this now all being said let's jump in over to the final price check so we can see how many monkfish we've managed to catch in this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video welcome to the final price check of catching monkfish here in my inventory is all the monkfish we've managed to catch. We managed to catch 305 monkfish over this one hour. So let's just go ahead and price check this. So the price from one hour of catching monkfish comes out to be 76,250 GP. Welcome to season five of Test No Osiris Wiki Moneymaker Methods. And today's moneymaker is going to be Mining F Salt. And it was released to the game on the 6th of September, 2018. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. The first requirement is a quest requirement, and you will have to have completed the Making Friends With My Arm quest. The second requirement is a level requirement, and the player must have at least a level 72 in the mining skill. This is so you can actually mine these salts. And last but not least, I would recommend for you guys to bring the best pickaxe that you can use. My gear setup is on screen and I will run through it now. All I have for today's video is a dragon pickaxe, but if you guys cannot afford a dragon pickaxe then I'm pretty sure a room pickaxe will be more than enough for this method. Also for the purpose of this video I am wearing full graceful. I'm only wearing this graceful outfit, this is because I ran here all the way from Relica. This is the first video of a set of three, as there are a couple more salts located in this mine that I want to do a money maker on in the future. But now let's jump into some information about this method. F salts is a type of salt that can be mined in the salt mine underneath Weiss after the completion of making friends with my arm quest. Along with Ert salt and T salt, they are the other two salts in this mine. You can also find basalt down here, but Ert salt and T salt alongside F salt can be used to light fire pits that provide benefits such as permanent light sources in certain caves. I will put a picture on screen for all the uh, light sources that require these salts so you guys can just see what these salts are used for. This salt is also used to create icy basalts and, they, and the icy basalts are basically a teleport up for you guys to get straight to Weiss so you don't have to run from Relica and get the boat where the uh, crabs are located. Mining F salts require a level 
of 72 in the mining skill and this salt is mined in chunks of 2 to 7. This scales with the player's mining level and every time the player successfully mines a chunk of the salts you will be granted 5 mining experience. Quick note the Varrock plate body effect does not work here. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many F salts we've managed to mine in this one hour and to see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Welcome to the final price check of mining F salts. So if I just go ahead and price check these quickly, so one hour of mining F salts comes out to be 676,837 GP. Welcome to season five of Test No Osiris Wiki Money Maker Methods. Today's money maker is going to be Mining Earth Salt, and it was also released to the game on the 6th of September 2018. If you guys want, you could join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. These requirements are pretty much the exact same as the previous F Salt video. The first requirement is a quest requirement and you will have to complete the making friends with my arm quest. There is a mining level requirement and that is for you guys to have at least a level 72. This is so you can actually mine this salt. And last but not least, just like the previous video, I would recommend for you guys to have the best pickaxe that you can afford if it is the dragon pickaxe or just the best pickaxe you are able to use. My gear setup is on screen and I will run through it now. Just like the previous video, all I have in today's video is a dragon pickaxe. But if you guys cannot afford this dragon pickaxe, then I would recommend for you guys to use the next best pickaxe that you can afford. And also for the purpose of this video, I am wearing a full graceful outfit. I'm only wearing this outfit, as I explained in the previous video, because I ran all the way from Relica to get here. This is the second video of a set of three, as there is still tea salts that are located in this mine and I want to make a video on them in the future. But now let's jump into some information about this method. Earth salt is a type of salt that can be mined in the salt mine underneath Weiss after the completion of the making friends with my arm quest. Alongside F salts and T salts it can be used to light fire pits that provide benefits such as permanent light sources. These are all around the game just as I did in the previous video I will put a picture on screen for all of the fire pits and the locations where you can light these fire pits. This salt is also used to create the stony basalt and this stony basalt will teleport you to the entrance of the troll stronghold just below the climbing rocks. Mining earth salt requires a level 72 in the mining skill and this is mined in chunks of 2 and 5 which I'm pretty sure in the previous video it was between 2 and 7 and when the player successfully mines a chunk of this salt they will be granted 5 experience in the mining skill but with this now all being said let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many earth salts we've managed to mine in this one hour and see how much money will be given away in today's video welcome to the final price check of mining earth salts in this one hour we managed to mine 4885 earth salt so now let's just go ahead and throw this in the price check so one hour of mine earth salt comes out to be 659,475 GP. Welcome to season five of Test No Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be mining tea salts. And they was released to the game on the 6th of September, 2018. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. The first requirement is a quest requirement and you will need to have completed the making friends with my arm quest. The second requirement is a skill requirement and you will need to have at least a level 72 in the mining skill. This is so you can actually mine this salt. And last but not least, just like the previous two videos, I would recommend for you guys to bring the best pickaxe you can. Uh, in my case, it is the dragon pickaxe, but if you cannot afford a dragon pickaxe, then just bring the best pickaxe that you can afford. My gear setup is on screen and I will run through it now. All I have in today's video is a dragon pickaxe. But like I said, if you guys cannot afford this dragon pickaxe, you can opt out and bring a rune pickaxe as I'm pretty sure that will be more than efficient enough. And if you don't bring a pickaxe, there is a pickaxe spawn just outside the mine where you mine these salts. But it is a, I'm pretty sure it is a iron pickaxe. And for the purpose of this video, I am wearing full graceful. I'm wearing full graceful as I ran from Relica. For you guys, I would recommend for you to wear either the full graceful if you're running from Relica or you can either wear the prospector outfit as this will give you a little XP bonus. 
this is the third and final video of this set of free salts but i may be back here in the future as there is still bath salts down here but i've already done a video on them before so i'm in no rush to do an updated video but now let's jump into some information about this method Tea salts is a type of salt that can be mined in the salt mine underneath Weiss. You can mine these salts after you have completed the Making Friends With My Arm quest. Along with F salts and Earth salts, it can be used to do light sources, such as permanent light sources, which is campfires and stuff. The most probably built one is probably in the cave where the cave horrors are and where the giant mole is. Uh, just as I did in the previous two videos, I will put a picture on screen so you can see where all these light sources are and how much salt you will require from each of these. This salt is also used to create stony basalt and icy basalt. I like I touched on in the previous videos, the stony basalt teleports you to the entrance of the troll stronghold just below the climbing rocks and the icy basalt will teleport you here to Weiss. Just like the previous two videos, mining tea salts require a mining level of 72 and when you have mined a chunk of this salt you will get between 2 and 6 and when the player successfully mines a chunk of this salt this will grant them 5 experience in the mine skill. But with this now all being said let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many tea salts we have managed to mine in this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video welcome to the final price check of mining tea salt and here in my invent is all the tea salt we've managed to mine over this one hour we managed to mine 4887 tea salt so i'll just go ahead and open up a price check so we can see this so one hour of mining tea salts comes out to be 654858 gp welcome to season five of testing osrs wiki money making methods and today's money maker is going to be catching 500 herbie balls and those released to the game on the 7th of september 2017 if you guys want you can join my cc for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live just like this one you're watching right now the requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following the first requirement is a quest requirement and you will have to have completed the bone voyage quest this is so you have access to the fossil island for the hunter level in today's video you will want to have at least a level 80 this is so you can actually track and catch this herbie bar the player will also need a level 31 in herb law skill this is so you can harvest the bar after tracking it and last but not least i would recommend for you guys to wear full graceful as you'll be running all the time to do this method and it is also recommended for you to bring some stamina potions with you my gear self is on screen and i will run through it now all i have for today's video is a full set of graceful you can obtain this by collecting the marks of grace while doing rooftop agility i would also recommend for you guys to bring magical secateurs but unfortunately i didn't bring them for this video my inventory setup is also on screen and i will enlarge it in my inventory to start off with on each trip i will have the herb sack and i've brought with me around 10 to 15 stamina potions i have left the rest of the inventory spaces blank this is so you can pick up the numalite and also you can pick up the uh, strange fossils you find around after tracking this bar. The location we will be tracking this bar is in the Mushroom Forest on Fossil Island. You will gain access to this island once you have completed the Bone Voyage quest. And now let's jump into some information about this method. The Herbie Bar is a creature that players can track and capture with a level of 18 Hunter and a level 31 in Herblock. And this will grant the player between 1950 and 2461 Hunter experience. But this will depend on your current Hunter level. It can be caught by first tracking down the footsteps which are left across Fossil Island until reaching a point where the footsteps enter a burrow. Players can then kick this burrow causing the bar to appear and get stunned just outside the hole. To harvest the bar, players may use secateurs or magical secateurs to harvest between one and three herbs from the bar's back. If the player is using the magical secateurs, this will allow the player to harvest eight additional herb compared to the regular secateurs. This additional herb will not provide any additional herb lore experience, but this will make you more money in the long run. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many herbs we've managed to gather in this one hour and to see how much money will be given away in today's video. Welcome to the final price check of 500 herbie. 
Um, I just want to show you my bank really quickly. So over these 500 uh, catches, we managed to get 22 small fossils, 14 medium, 8 large and 2 rare fossils. I'm going to leave them in the bank because I plan to stay here for a fair bit longer than just this 500 uh, catches. This is all the herbs we managed to get. 270 guam, 8 mirintil, 1 taramin, 102 lantadine, 135 cantadine, 31 snapdragon, 121 guams, 110 avento, 74 irit, 2 haralander, 63 dwarf weeds, 25 torstals and 80 renars. And over this 500 catches as well we managed to get 6384 numulite. Let's just go ahead and price check that. So that is 146k so now let's just go ahead and add in all of these one by one so all of the guams all the merintils the one taramin all the lantadimes cantadimes snapdragons guams aventos irits haralander dwarf weeds and tarstals so far we're up to 1.4 million and if we go ahead and add in these renars so 800 herbies comes out to be 1,963,964 GP. Welcome to season five of Tesno Osiris Wiki Moneymaker Methods. And today's moneymaker is going to be Cutting Cowquat Kegs. And they was released to the game on the 11th of July, 2005. If you guys want, you can join my CC for the latest updates and to know when new videos go live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. The first requirement, is that the player will need to have a decent amount in starter cash. Around 1 million gold pieces will be more than enough for the player to start this method and do it efficiently for one hour. The second and final requirement you will need to be able to do this method is that you will need to have a knife in your inventory as this is what we will be using to cut these calquat fruits into kegs. I do not have a gear cell for this video and my inventory is very straightforward. All I have in my invent is a knife and the rest of my spaces are taken up with these fruits. I would recommend for you guys to place the knife how mine is on screen. This is so you can click between the fruit and the knife a lot faster and this will result in more kegs cut per hour. Now let's jump to some information about these Calquat fruits and what these kegs are used for. The Calquat fruit can be grown at a level 72 in the farming skill. This can be grown in the Calquat tree farming patch. To protect the tree from disease while growing, players may pay the nearby gardener 8 poison ivy berries. These fruits can be hollowed out with a knife to make the Calquat kegs, which can hold up to 4 pints of player brewed ale. They can also be put in the compost bin to make super compost. According to the book, Gilinor's Flora's Fruit, Calquat fruits have a tough woody skin and a hollow interior, and these fruits are known as the largest fruits across Gilinor. A Calquat keg is used to collect completed brewing ales and ciders. Two kegs are required to empty one barrel, each keg containing four pints compared to a beer glass which only contains one single pint. They are created by using a knife on the Calquat fruits. But with this now all being said, let's jump on over to the final price check. So we can see how many kegs we've managed to cut in this one hour and see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Welcome to the final price check of cutting these Calquat kegs. Here in my invent is all of the kegs we have managed to cut. So we managed to make 4,721 kegs. So if I go ahead and price check uh, one Calquat fruit, that is 142. So if we go ahead and times 142 by 4721, that will give us our total investment. So our total investment is 670,382. Our kegs all come out to be 1,852,000 coins. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. 100852 and then if we go ahead and take away our copied number which was 670,382 so today's profits is going to be 330,470 GP. Welcome to the Moneymaker leaderboard. On this leaderboard I ranked the moneymakers after I tried them and I split it into four columns. The first column is for the method I was using, the second column is for the money this method has earned me, column three is for the order they're ranking compared to the order they was released in and column four is for difficulty. But after I've tried each method I will rank it. If it is easy to do then I'll rank it as green easy. If it is hard to do then I'll rank it as red hard and if it is somewhere in between like some of these methods are and I rank it as yellow medium this is for my medium tier 
But today's money maker was cutting Calquat kegs. This is the last episode in season 5. It has took me a long time to get this episode out. That is because I have been recording other series in the background. Um, the most important one is probably the flipping series I have been recording. But let's just go ahead and finish off this video. Today's profits was 330,470 GP. Like I said this is the last episode so this is episode 16 on season 5 and to finish off this season or this series it was an easy money maker so not too much to say on that. The main reason it is easy because I'm pretty sure it is not locked behind any um, specific levels. I'm pretty sure you can just buy these fruits on the GE and just take a knife to them straight away. I don't think there is like a cooking skill because you don't gain XP from doing it. I am pretty sure you can do this from level 1 across the board if you have the starting cash of course. Talking about the starting cash, I said in the video it is around about 1 million. That is for the uh, upper ends of this money maker. You could do this in portions at around 250k. Uh, you could easily go ahead and just do this um, just buying and selling as you go as well. So that is why I ranked it as easy to do. But I hope you guys have all enjoyed this money maker. If you have enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe. It really will help my channel grow. And we are closing on to 4,200 subscribers. I'm pretty sure at the moment we only need around 8 or 9 subs left. So hopefully we can get that by the end of the year. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, um, I try to do these weekly money makers. And I've got a few more series coming in the near future. So stay tuned for them. And if you guys want to support the channel further, you can do. I have a Patreon link in the description box. And on there, I give away monthly bonds to the people who support the channel. But I hope you guys have all enjoyed. And I will see you in the next Moneymaker. Goodbye.